Father, uh, now to lead us in an invocation. So if you'll join me in prayer. <clears throat> We're going to read from the book of Philippians 6 through 8. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, there, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy of praise, think about these things. Father, we come before you, and, and your word says to bring it to you with, with prayer. Lord, we, we just lift up our, our city to you, Lord. We, we lift up the first responders and all those that are responsible for what's going on around us, Lord. Lord, we're, we're going on six months of this. And Lord, we, we still just, uh, we, we, we depend on you for our strength to be able to go through this. Lord, just uh, be with this commission. Allow us to use wisdom in our deliberations. Allow us to really think about what it is that we're doing here, Lord. And allow us to look upon you for the leadership to look upon you for that decision making. Lord, we, we, we love you and we just honor you and we ask that you just allow us to glorify your name. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome all of you to our meeting tonight. Appreciate your uh, participation. Uh, we have uh, seemed to be able to be reporting on some positive trends in uh, COVID-19 cases contracting. Uh, that tends to be trending downward. Uh, very thankfully, our our hospitals, uh, the numbers of COVID-19 patients in our hospitals is down to in the two hospitals in Harlingen about 60, a little over 60 patients uh, with COVID-19. That's down from a high of about uh, 380 and back in the peak of it in July where our hospitals were, or were completely inundated. Uh, we're not out of the woods and we don't know what's going to happen. We do think that uh, uh, the three W's is having an impact and we would encourage you to, to continue to wash your hands, wear your mask and watch your distance and, uh, and stay, avoid uh, large gatherings so that we can continue to keep our community safe and so that we hope that those numbers will continue uh, in that downward projection and not, and not turn back around upward. So thank you for uh, helping us to achieve uh, that important uh, result over the last 30 days. I'll now call the meeting to order. This is a duly uh, posted regular scheduled meeting of the Harlesham City Commission and uh, we're going to go to uh, citizen input we have some uh, folks that want to be want to be called on general items and we'll, ca we'll call on them now okay mayor we also have some that are present that would like to speak okay. so we'll go with the list on the people that want to be called Hello, Mrs. Tanya Vega. This is Amanda Elizondo with the City of Harlingen. You submitted a form to speak. Uh, you have two minutes. You have two minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and start the clock now. <coughs> and I'll let you know. You may okay. go. You may start now. Okay. Um, uh, basically, I just wanted to talk about uh, the recycling center. I think that it's great that it's been reopened, um, but there are still some issues with the new process. Um, that haven't been addressed, uh, such as the uh, signage on the on the bins. Um, right now, they're very basic. They don't have any pictures. 
Um, they're not bilingual, which is something that we need here in, in our community. Some people don't speak English. Um, as well as the, <clears throat> excuse me, the sign that's outside on the fence of the recycling center. Excuse me. The, their sign is still up stating that the, the recycling center is closed until further notice. If somebody were to pass by after hours and not know that it's opened again, they're going to believe that it's still open. Um, which I think, I mean, it's, it's just not beneficial to have that sign up there because people are going to think that it's still closed. Um, and the other issue that um, I know that um, with our group, the reinvent Harnage and Recycling, we've had some um, comments on our Facebook that uh, a couple of residents have gone to the landfill and they will both been hit by garbage trucks. Um, I don't, I, I myself haven't gone to the landfill location, but um, from what I understand, they have to drive against traffic and it's not very um, safe to be driving in and out of there. Um, that's just a couple of comments that we got. Um, there was also a, a comment of the, the grate that's outside on the, in the, com where the commerce bins are at. Um, of another resident that um, almost got her cane stuck in the grate when she was trying to um, unload some. Miss Vega, uh, your two minutes are up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next one is Jason Long, 541 Pond Valley Circle. Objections on rezoning the Pond Valley South. Let me call him. Isn't that an agenda item? Yes. Item eight. Oh, we can. Okay. We can call him. Let's try one more time. We can call him now or, or then or at the time of the calling of the item. Mm -hmm. so we can call him, so it's fine. Actually, we should we should. Hello, Mr. Jason Long. Uh, we Mr. should call Long? him at the public hearing on yes. item 8A. This, um, this is Amanda Lisondo, sir. Would you um, like to be called when the public hearing is being conducted, or would you like to speak now? I'll probably speak when the item comes up. Okay, thank you, sir. We'll call you back. <clears throat> okay, the next one is Sue White, 720 yeah. East Harrison Drive through, through trunk of tree. And let me call her. Hello, Mrs. White. This is Amanda yes. Lusondo with the City of Harlingen. You submitted yes, a form to speak under public comments. You have yes, two minutes, and I will start the clock now. You may start. I'm working downstairs. Pardon me? You're downstairs? I'm down. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, do, you, do you want her to come up, sir, ma'am? Do you want her to come up? She's, She's downstairs. She's downstairs. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, um, can you come upstairs, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Try to speak into the microphone a little bit closer. 
Sorry about that. My name is Sue White. Uh, I own Little Miracles Home Health here in Harlingen. Um, and this may not be the appropriate forum. And um, I reached out trying to get clearance. Um, we are trying to host a drive through event uh, in Harlingen um, and have to have either the mayor or the um, county judge approval. Um, if I'm not in the right place, please let me know and I won't waste your time. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and let us know what you want to do. It's a, it, what we're trying to do is host, um, we are a pediatric home health agency, and we are trying to host a drive-through um, trick-or-treat, trunk-or-treat um, through our parking lot um, in which we will follow the, the county guidelines. Um, but in order to do that, it will need more than 10 people. Um, each, each, basically, each station will be one employee and their families so that no outside um, individuals are together but going by the county guidelines it said that we had to have either the mayor or the county judge all right so you're, you're wanting to host an event that would be outdoors but that would have more than 10 people it could um, in the parking lot yes but they will be appropriately yeah, spaced and it would be in the city of Harlingen yes okay uh, the, the, the mayor can uh, authorize an event of more than 10 people but why don't we have uh, uh, let's have somebody from the staff contact her to get all the all the more d details that more than you can give us in two minutes and then we'll uh, we'll look at you know whether uh, that's something that we can authorize but that's a, I mean it sounds like a great idea we'll work with you to try to figure out how to how to do it uh, it's a positive thing for the community we just, we just have to make we just have to make sure we're doing everything right yes sir absolutely. okay so thanks Thank you. a lot for, Appreciate that. for suggesting that and we'll have Talk to Mr. Sanchez and he'll get with you tomorrow. The next one, Mayor, we have is uh, Christy Tova, 305 Yacarangas Drive, and it's on the new recycling program. Okay. Okay. Christy, this is Amanda from the city of Harlingen. You signed up to speak. Uh, you have two minutes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You may start. Good evening, commissioners. Um, I am here on behalf of Reinvent Harlingen Recycling, which is a community group that, that we started in response to the closure of the recycling center this summer. Uh, we've been receiving a lot of feedback uh, within our group. We do receive feedback in the, in the form of Facebook messages, in the form of Facebook posts, in the form of Google Forms that we've solicited. And uh, a lot of people are concerned that the program is not being set up for success. Uh, it's it's a, of an especial concern that the elderly are having a lot of trouble accessing these containers. They cannot, they cannot lift. Yes, hello? Yes, hello? Yes, hello. Did you hear me? Yes, we're, you're oh, on. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. They, they're having trouble accessing these containers. They cannot lift to reach the slots and put the things in. Um, there's a lot of things that are uh, placed in the wrong container. There are things that don't belong in the containers. The containers are full. Um, what we're seeing is that these containers need a full-time attendant in order to be successful. I'm really questioning how long McAllen is going to take our recyclables if they are, uh, if they do continue to be contaminated like this. Um, and I would say that our group has volunteered to uh, 
to do some hours educating people at the bins, to do some hours manning the bins, but our efforts were uh, robust by the city manager, uh, the assistant city manager, Mr. Sanchez. Um, I know that you're relying on Keep Harlington Beautiful to do this, but um, th that group is imploding. Uh, they don't have the funding to fund the recycling arm, to fund the education arm. Uh, there were a number of people that resigned from the board because of the recycling issue. Um, so I just would encourage you to check in on that with your public works department and let's set this program up for success, please. Christy, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tovar. Okay, Mayor, the next one. Okay, hold on. Let me turn off this. <coughs> okay, the next one is uh, Aaron Magnus. Oh, uh, here. You're here. Okay. Okay, well, come on up. Okay. <coughs> Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Do I begin? Or? Yes. Okay. yes. I have a little, I'll read and I'll do it fast. I'll try. Okay. Uh, thank you for letting me just come here and discuss this with you. I would like to propose um, that playgrounds open sooner than later. I'm advocating for that. I have, I just moved here this summer. I have two small children and um, I find that them being outside is critical just for health and there's really nothing else available for them at this point. Um, I'm just going to give you a couple bullet points that I have sources for. Um, I have copies if you'd like. Um, number one, um, kids are not a large risk factor for COVID. More kids have died in the last six flu seasons than this whole, during this whole pandemic. And we have never shut down playgrounds in the past during flu seasons for the kids. Um, two, kids are not super spreaders, especially younger children that frequent playgrounds. Studies have been done in Finland, Japan, and South Korea to show that little transmission happens between kids and more transmission occurs between adults. Um, number three, the primary, um, way that COVID is transmitted, as we know, is through respiratory droplets, not surfaces. So playing outdoors in the sunlight helps to kill the germs in a more beneficial way than going to Chuck E. Cheese, urban air, dance and gymnastics classes, and even schools, all of which are opening at this moment, or are open at this moment. Um, number four, other forms of entertainment that are potentially not beneficial that are open, movie theaters, gyms, indoor kids' places, like I mentioned above. Um, if these are open and they're less safe indoor places, then I think we can open up Playgrounds, and finally, um, when we shut this, when we shut down society, when this began, it I, I think it rightly began to understand the virus and to make sure the health facilities could handle care. And now, like you've mentioned, we're we're down. The numbers are down. It's been over six months, um, and I think now that we can look at the facts and say that opening up playgrounds and letting the, the adults choose if they feel comfortable is something that's safe to do. And a lot of other cities are opening them up, and they've been doing things like putting up and mandating capacity and asking people to still wear their mask and, and safe distancing and I know with kids that's harder to do but they're they are opening up around the nation right now so I'm advocating for that and thank you for listening okay thank you we can't we can't really discuss that item because I know. it's not on the agenda but we appreciate you bringing it to our okay. attention thank and you. we will ask our, our staff to review the policy and uh, we'll we'll follow up with you thank okay. you Thank you. Did you say you had copies? Oh, sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Mayor, the next one is Ron Lozano, and I think he's present. 2410 Riverside Drive, tax free public hearing. Well, we'll wait for item three, and we'll okay, call Mr. Lozano at item three. Okay, and then um, the next person, he's got three items, Mayor. He wants to speak on Item number three, number nine, and number six. All right, Mr. Lozano, would you like to be called at the time of the items are called? I, I may have misheard. Uh, I, if, you, if you keep to the agenda schedule, yes, it would be three, six, and nine. Two of them are public hearings, but thank you very much. Yeah. All right, that's, we'll call you then. Okay, uh, the next one is Frank Lozano. I don't know if he's present, but yes. he's. Okay, we'll call him at item six. Okay. We'll call uh, Ms. Lucio at item 11 and 12. Okay. Okay. I don't have the other sign-ups. Okay, Mayor. Then the next one would be Robert Lipwich, and he's present. Tax increase in uh, Port of Harlingen. Mayor, I'd like to speak now on the Port of Harlingen. On the Port of Harlingen, so come for, so come on up and. Okay, Robert Lepwich, 909 East Parkwood, Harlingen, Texas. Mayor, I'd just like to to ask that you consider something for the citizens of Harlingen. 
uh, not specifically for the citizens of Arlington, obviously, because the port tax is what I'm referring to, affects a lot more people than that. However, back in the day when Los Indios needed a boost and there were some primary beneficiaries that, uh, that uh, benefited from the uh, elimination of the free port tax that uh, was affecting the warehouse district out in Los Indios, I just ask that y'all do the same thing as a commission and as an EDC, y'all take it up and petition on a vote to petition the county commissioner's court to uh, put either eliminate that three cent tax, which does not affect the revenue of the city of Harlingen, but would benefit the citizens of Harlingen. Put that tax for the, the county commissioner's court to put that tax to a public vote or to not reinstate it at all would be the preference but if they if they continue to insist and you continue to support that tax uh, and you don't take an effort to to advocate for the citizens of Arlington in the reduction of that tax uh, I guess we could kind of look at that as that you're endorsing that three cent tax that property tax however there is a, an opportunity for the citizens of Harlingen if the county commissioners court would put that up for a public vote and I'm just asking that you consider that put it on the agenda, have the commission vote on it, have the EDC vote on it. Similarly, just like you did on the Los Indios Freeport exemption tax, which benefited big corporations. We need something to benefit the citizens of Harlingen at this point because of COVID, flooding, whatever. It's three cents on the property tax. It doesn't seem like much, but when you add it all up, it, it, it does affect people. That's all I've got. All right, thank you. Okay, Mayor, the next one is Juan Gonzalez, and I think he's present, 209 Palm Valley Circle, Planning and Development. Juan Gonzalez. Would you, would you like to speak when the item comes up, sir? Yes. Okay. okay, let me see. That would be item eight. Item eight, okay. So the next one, Mayor, is Richard Ivey, two, uh, 220. Okay. East Commerce Public Improvement District. And I believe he's here. Okay. Hello, guys. My name's Richard Ivey. Um, some people call me Shampoozy. I own Pueblo Tires. You can see it from here. This is regarding the proposed uh, reauthorization of a public improvement district, which. Um, is from what I can gather proposed for beautification uh, sidewalks uh, paint I don't know what else it's going to be manned by a full-time person it will cost the businesses in the districts 15 cents per hundred dollars valuation I'm a tire dealer I work on cars for a living it's been a long time. I've been running the company for uh, 33 years and this property is very dear to me. We've done a lot with this property. Um, there's a very beautiful map here and it looks like somebody very intentionally uh, made a little loop on the bottom of the lap to uh, include my property knowing that at my current $285,000 valuation on the building, which I think is high, it would be $4,275 per year that I would contribute to this fund, which is probably okay, but you're stealing that money from my child who's in college. You're stealing that money from my manager who is on profit sharing and from uh, my sales manager who's also on profit sharing. 50% of the profit goes back to the employees and you gotta realize what you're doing to them. Um, this is a small business. We work very hard and we keep it clean. And uh, for those of you who are uh, customers, uh, thank you very much for your business. And uh, uh, if you're not a customer yet, we invite you to come and give us some business and you'll understand that we're a great asset to your beautiful city. Uh, aside from that, thank you all so much for everything you do. All right, thank you. Okay, the next person is Raymond Reyes. Um, DID. Well, do you want to speak now? Or you yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and speak now because unfortunately I have to go tend to something else. Uh, Raymond Ray is 706 Nantucket Drive in uh, Harnigan, obviously. Uh, we used to be in the downtown district many years back. 
Um, I think there is some benefit, but there could be some drawbacks. The thing that I noticed when we were in the district, uh, we still had to trim our own palm trees. We still had to like weed eat certain areas. I personally still clean out the drainage ditch. Um, with my venue, we were hosting a lot of shows up until this COVID stuff. We actually had a deal in place to bring the outfield, uh, which was a very popular band in the 80s, and we we're working on a plan to close down uh, certain uh, aspects of the street from the light all the way down to the Bert Ogden building uh, until all this happened. I'm just wondering how, if we get back into the district, how are how is that going to affect what we've been doing for a while? I do have artists that come out on my property uh, supporting the art walk that have done murals on my property, and I know that there's some res restrictions that are imposed on that. So, uh, you know, I like to support everything that was going on with the art walk. I thought it was very positive. Uh, after the art walk was over, the vendors would come over to my property and enjoy the show. It was all free. You know, we weren't charging everything at the door. So uh, if there's a way where it can be positive, I know a lot of the business owners that I spoke with uh, were against it because of the COVID, and a lot of them are losing a lot of money. I myself have lost, you know, like six months, five months worth of revenue. Uh, but I'm always down to support anything positive in the downtown area. So as long as, you know, it's... You know, I don't know if it's going to be voted on today to pass or this is the first reading. Uh, I just barely got this letter uh, yesterday when I came back from Austin. So uh, I just wanted to, you know, make that little statement and stuff uh, because I'm always down to support positive things as long as it's done in a positive way, you know, and doesn't uh, hurt what Harlingen is trying to do in general. So uh, thank you for your time, Commissioners, Mayor. And... Um, Y'all have a good, from the good evening to, to and stay contact, safe. To contact you to answer some of your qu other questions. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay, we'll have some. We'll have some of the staff members contact. You. Okay, I appreciate it. Right, Y'all stay safe. Thank, have a good you, day, Mr. Reyes. Stay well. The next person is Susan Strong, 412 Palm Valley Circle, zoning change. I can wait till the agenda. Okay. The next one is uh, Christina Garfield, Palm Valley Zoning. You want to, would you, you want to speak okay. now or you want to wait until we get to the item? Okay, then we have Bill DeBrooks, 306 East Jackson, DID. Hi, Bill DeBrook, 306 East Jackson. I was just going to respond to what Raymond was going to say which he didn't say um, all the things he does at art night all the artwork that gets done is pretty much on the inside of his property and doesn't impact anything uh, not against the rules mr. Shampoozy is not in the district I explained to him he looked at the map wrong uh, so you know his his manager will still get his bonus uh, other than that you know this is the let's see 1990, 95, 2000. This is a lot of times we've done this. Uh, we get over 51% is what we need. Normally we'll get 60, 70. Um, so we'd really like your help in doing it one more time. Thank you. So, so Pueblo Tire is not in the district? No, 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 they're specifically not in the district. It goes to the north of their property, comes around, hits the railroad tracks, and he. He thought he was in the parking lot, in the city parking lot there. Okay. You know, he's the next one, Mayor, is Frank Lozano, 218 Austin Avenue, item number six. Okay, we'll, we'll wait. We, you can speak at the time that we get the item if you want to, or you can speak now. Okay. And that's, that's it, Mayor. Okay, until we uh, yes. recall those. All right, is Mr. A uh, is Mike Alex downstairs? I believe so, ma'am. Can we ask him to come up? <clears throat> Item one is board recognition, so we want to 
Uh, Mike Alex to come up, and we want to recognize him and express our appreciation to him for agreeing to serve uh, as a member of our Parliament of Mountain Valley Corporation. And so, Mike, I, mean, I always think it's fitting that Alex uh, serves on the Economic Development Corporation Board. And so, uh, congratulations thank and you. thank you so much for agreeing to do what our position is. Uh, for us in our city, and we, we are grateful to you for your service. Well, thank you very much. I'm excited. Thank you. Uh, I'm smiling at our back. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> okay, next we have item two, which is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of August 5th. 2020, are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing now, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes. As presented. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Item three is the second final reading to approve an ordinance adopting the city of Harlem's budget for fiscal year 2020 2021 by a record vote. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioners. Texas Local Government Code Section 102.007 requires the City Commission, uh, City Commission's vote to adopt a budget to be a record vote. Exhibit A displays total proposed revenues and expenditures and estimated fund balances by fund for fiscal year 2021. Total proposed revenues are 78 million. 15,363 compared to total uh, proposed expenditures of 79,892,457. The revenues and expenditures for the Community Development Block Grant, Harlingen Downtown Improvement, um, EDC, HCIB, the Waterworks, and the Valley Airport are not included on here. And again, this uh, requires a record vote. The staff recommends approval. We don't need to read the caption again, right? I'll go ahead and read the caption into the, okay. into the record. An ordinance adopting the revenue and expenditure budget for the city of Harlingen, Texas for the fiscal year October 1st, 2020 through September 30th, 2021 in the amount of 78,015,363 and 79,892,457 respect, respectively, providing for publication of the caption of this ordinance and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Okay. Uh, Motion to approve. I'll show yeah, wait for commissioner. Yeah, I know. We're, we're I waiting know. for commissioner. I know. I know. He is coming. There we go. Okay. He's he has returned. So uh, if you'd like to make that, if you'd like to make that motion. Okay. In his presence. M motion to approve. Second. Right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the? Uh, final reading of the budget ordinance. All right, hearing now, I'll call upon, uh, call on each one of you and to record, record, record your vote. So Commissioner Odebe. Your Honor, this is the item that I All right, your come forward, please. Thank you for reminding me. <clears throat> um, Mr. Rodriguez, is Stephen Virial given a salary? He's the Harlingen Convention Center. You know what that is, right? Yeah. Is he given a salary by the city? He, he's, he is not a city employee. He's not? Mr. Lozano. Yeah. All right, thank you. Are there, as the mayor has indicated recently, there was a $500,000 allocation to do the first two years, and this, this is the first full fiscal year, correct? for the convention center and you have no expenses for the upcoming year is there <clears throat> not going to be a stipend for BC Lynn during this next upcoming fiscal year we, we intend to bring the budget uh, before the City Council at the next meeting on the 22nd there will be a budget presented to the City Commission but but their tax rate is going to be imposed today as you all know, and it's already at the maximum that foregoes an election. Is not that correct? That's correct. 
All right, so any penny, one single cent over is going to call an automatic election, which is all you guys hate. So how can you, how can you fool the public constantly by wanting to have a tax rate today, even though just like yesterday, just like yesterday, you're still amending the current budget, which only lasts for two more weeks. That's the kind of deception that doesn't allow us to get answers at a timely manner when we barely do get some answers. How much is still left of the $500,000 today? You're asking me? Well, he's not going to respond, sure. so, so that, that leaves only you. $113,000. How much? $113,000. Okay. So $113,000 may be what's going to carry over this entire year starting in October, and they're saying they're not going to try to tentatively get bookings until June of next year. So they had $937,000, so it wouldn't, that's going to be about a half a million dollar loss right there for the upcoming Two year, even zero. if they, is that correct? All right, thank you, Mr. Lozano. Well, I'll, I'll bring that up at the next item. Thank you. Okay, I believe that. Okay. Is there anyone that who signed up to speak on item three? Item three, Mayor. That's the only one I have on item three, Ron Lozano. Yeah. That, that's the only one for that's item three, Mayor, that we have. Okay, then uh, we have a motion and a second. We yes, need sir. to record each uh, individual commissioner's vote. So I'll start with Commissioner Uribe. Aye. Commissioner Puente. Aye. 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 Commissioner Mesmar. Aye. Aye. All right. Motion, car motion carries. Yes, item, the consent agenda, item 4A through K. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? So move, Mayor. Second. A motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Item five is consideration and possible action to approve a resolution ratifying the property tax increase reflected in the adopted budget for fiscal year 2020-2021. Texas local, local government code section 102.007C states that when a budget will require raising more property taxes than in the previous year, a vote separate from the adopted, adopting the budget or tax rate must be taken to ratify the property tax increase. A vote in addition to and separate from the vote to adopt the budget or tax rate must be taken to ratify the property tax increase. Staff recommend, recommends approval. <coughs> Is there a motion to adopt the resolution ratifying the property tax? So moved. Second. And a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mayor, I, I believe Ron wanted to speak on item six. Are we on item yes, six? Item. Hang on. Item I, five. I, I, okay. All, okay. Uh, any opposed? <clears throat> all right. Uh, motion carries. Item six is a public hearing to hear comments for or against the proposed tax rate for fiscal year 2021. A taxing unit is required to hold a public hearing to adopt a tax rate that exceeds a no new revenue tax rate. The tax rate being proposed is 0.619849 per $100 uh, valuation. This tax rate has been uh, factored into the proposed fiscal year 2021 budget as presented to the City Commission. Uh, the known revenue rate of 0 0.601434, uh, the voter approval rate of 0.619849 compared to the prior year uh, tax rate that was approved of 63 cents. Uh, compared to our proposed rate of 0.619849. Okay, this is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing and ask for any comments. Uh, we know that Mr. Lozano has uh, signed up to speak on this, and uh, so we'll let Mr. Lozano come first. There's a couple of Lozanos here, but I'll uh, take advantage of my age, Your Honor. Mr. Sedna, as the, you'll recall a moment ago, 
the months of January and February are winter months, so they're probably the worst months for a convention center. And as I indicated, they're suggesting they may resume in June of next year. You have a deficit expenditure of over $900,000, and I'm being generous there. My question is, do you think it's a fair statement to say that you may lose another half a million dollars next year on the convention center? Uh, Mr. Othello, as like I stated before, the convention center operator will present a budget to the city council at the next meeting. At that time, we'll talk about uh, the revenues and expenditures. All right. You, you read the same article. You know there's an effort to reach BC Lind. They know that today you're attempting to put, impose a tax rate on the citizenry, and yet you're not going to, you have no clue. I, and, and that's exactly what I meant about how this city generally runs. It's just that the city's been asleep. And y'all know how to take full advantage of that. And that's why I'm saying, why can you tout, this was, <clears throat> your rage last year we have the best convention center in the valley all the flowery language you want to use and you have no idea what the budget is going to be that's the kind of irresponsibility with our money yes mr. Champuzzi walked out of here maybe mollified because the little loophole it turned out he was a loophole he's right there in the middle of something and he's the one that got excluded maybe because Maybe he's got good lenders. Two minutes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. I have Mr. Frank Lozano on the same item here. Item okay. number Mr. six. Mr. Lozano, you may come forward and. Good afternoon, Frank Lozano, 218 East Dawson Avenue, Harlingen, Texas, 78550. As chairman of the Cameron County Libertarian Party, I'd like to also speak out against any uh, increases in tax revenue. As Mr. Shampusi had said correctly, taxation is theft. It is a form of theft. It's extortion, to be specific. And what any tax increase is doing is it's extorting money from the citizens of Harlingen. Us, as property owners, we have to pay taxes. That's just the fact of life. But they don't have to be as high and ex exorbitant as they currently are, or even worse, to be raised further. Um, this is an important issue for citizens. I think it's a, a good issue to campaign on the next time the elections come around, the only way to keep you all in check. And so as a, as a libertarian and as a citizen of Harlingen, I will certainly be um, campaigning on that issue and taking note of, of anybody that votes in favor of said tax increase and using the electoral mechanisms available to us in order to attempt to uh, stop such theft from occurring. So I'd like you to take that into consideration. Take into consideration the current pandemic's been economically hard on all of us. It makes no sense to raise taxes when we're hurting. It makes sense to raise taxes perhaps during a prosperous year. However, uh, this is not such a year and it's not a, it's not a good look. It's not good politics, it's not good optics and I don't see how you're going to um, be able to campaign on that subject. So, um, you know, I would just reiterate that uh, raising taxes is simply um, a horrible thing to do, especially to your neighbors. So just keep that in mind. Thank you. I have Mr. Robert <coughs> Lepwich, tax increase. Okay, Robert Lepwich, 909 East Parkwood. I just wanted to start off, you know, we, we talked this last year, you guys wanted 12, over 12% 12 rate increase on top of the, uh, you know, the you know the valuation increases and since then we've looked and now we've got valley vista mall pays four hundred thirty four thousand dollars in back taxes and the only way that we we're able to pay that was through home tax solutions they had to go borrow that money right mayor you told me that last year that the big retailers talked to you and said that that tax increase last summer was okay with them now you got the mall having to borrow a half a million dollars to pay their tax bill for 2019 and their and their next tax bill is coming up Let's talk about some other valuation increases. Payless stores, they closed that location out by the mall. Their valuation was $460,000. It is now $1.25 million at that location. Kohl's, they, their valuation 
18 months ago was three million seven hundred seventy three thousand dollars now it's six million four hundred and thirty three thousand dollars a seventy percent increase two million dollars two and a half million dollar increase Mervyn same thing four million four hundred thousand dollars went to seven million five hundred thousand dollars this is these are valuation increases in 18 months on top of the 12 percent increase in the rate and on top of the 3.4 whatever percent increase you're doing again this year now we've got covid we've got floods that have affected harlingen the economy you've got food lines you've got all kinds of stuff and you guys aren't even considering there's no apathy from this commission the the, the commission that's voting for these tax increases is out of touch with the community let's go to some residential properties well, let's go to downtown. There's a downtown improvement district. Somebody's worried about that 15 cent downtown improvement district assessment that they're fixing, that you guys are fixing to vote on. Article in the paper, rising appraisals threaten downtown shops. Stated by Bilderbrook, he's probably gone already, 43% increase in valuation increases last year. Another 13% increase Two minutes this year. are up. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lefkowitz. Is there anyone, anyone else? That's all I have, man. All right, then uh, if there's no one else would like to speak for or against the uh, proposed tax rate for fiscal year 2021, we'll go on to item seven, which is consideration and possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading for tax year 2020 ad valorem tax rate for maintenance and operations uh, together with interest and sinking rate for fiscal year 2021 by our record vote. And so we'll ask the city attorney to read the caption, please. An ordinance of the city of Harlingen, Texas, <clears throat> levying ad valorem taxes for use and support of the municipal government of the city for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2020 and terminating September 30th, 2021, providing for apportioning each levy for specific purposes, providing which when taxes shall become due and when same shall become delinquent if not paid, providing for publication and an effective date and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Okay, now I think everybody has, if they're gonna make the motion, you have to, there are three. That's correct, there are three that. motions. Okay, so do you want me to read the three motions? Okay, do so the I'm gonna move, I move that the maintenance and operations rate be fixed at point five two five seven if six, i may two. let's do let's do three separate votes three separate votes no problem so uh, the first of the three is on the uh, maintenance mno rate fixed at point five two five seven six two okay. is there a second <clears throat> the second one i move that the no, interest no, just <laughs> the second, second, the second. Second. second my motion oh second his motion three we need the uh, city attorney tells us we need three separate motions. Okay, We're going to so, vote three times. So we have a motion and a second. Is there is there any discussion? Any questions? All right. All those. Uh, so I'll call for uh, each commissioner to register their vote. Aye. Aye. No. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion carries. You want to do the second one? Sure. Go. Yeah. Uh, so. So All right. Like. So I move that the interest and the uh, sinking tax rate be fixed at 0 0.094087. Second. All right. Any discussion? I'll call. Aye. No. <coughs> okay. Commissioner Del Rosa. Aye. Aye. And Commissioner Mesmar. Aye. All right. Now we need to. Uh, Third motion. Third motion. I move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 0.619849, which is effectively a 3.06% increase in the tax rate. All right. Second. There's a second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right. Aye. No. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Mesmer. Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries. So the second and final uh, vote will take place on the proposed tax rate on Wednesday, September 22nd 
at the regular city commission meeting at 530 Town Hall, City Hall, 118 uh, East Tyler in Harlingen. So we're going to go now to item 8. That is a special city commission meeting, correct? Just wanted to, for the record, man, special city commission. That's a special meeting. Okay. I, I stand corrected. Uh, special uh, meeting on September 22nd at 5.30 p.m. at Town Hall. That's uh, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Okay. So item eight is a public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading to amend the plan development site plan from residential single family to residential duplex for lot 11, block three, Palm Valley South subdivision located at 314 Palm Valley Circle. Mayor City Commission, uh, good afternoon. We have a request for a uh, zoning change. Uh, in uh, This is a planned development uh, district and there's a, a proposed change of the uh, one of the lots in that district for this uh, subdivision. The, uh, the address is 314 Palm Pali Circle and the applicant is uh, Dr. Cristina Gonzalez. This is the subdivision, it's on, on the east side of Stewart Place, about half a mile north of the expressway. And this is the property, this is uh, Dr. Gonzalez's property that she's requesting the zoning change. This is a diagram of her property, the, the frontage, the street is over here. It's a triangular shaped uh, property, and so the backyard narrows into, into a, a corner. Gotcha. This is the subdivision that was uh, recorded in 92 and annexed into the city in 2001. And the property is right here. This is the land use map. And uh, as you can see, this is uh, her property. The, the land uses in the block are all single family homes or garden homes. But there are duplexes across the street and the properties are zoned for triplexes across the street. But the properties within the block are all single family homes. Can you explain to me what a garden home is? And the, well, a garden home is basically uh, zero setback on one side and 10 feet setback on the other side. And single family home, you have five and five. That's the only difference. Okay, thank you. But they're considered separate homes. Yes. Yeah, they're just close. They're, they're, they're just the setbacks are different, but they're single family homes. So that's what that's what you have in the block here. You have yeah, but a when some. You, but when you see the houses, it looks like one big house, but it's actually two houses. Yeah, in some cases we have one house in two lots, which is which is allowed. Okay. This is the original land use uh, map for that part of the neighborhood. So as you can see, single family homes, duplexes over here and triplexes over here. And then you have offices over here. So it's kind of like a mix of uses for the subdivision. Aerial photograph, and this is a Dr. Gonzalez property like that, it's a triangle. Picture of her property. Land use uh, designation in the comprehensive plan is low, is low density residential. The Planning and Sony Commission held a public hearing during their meeting of September 9th. Dr. Gonzalez, the property owner, spoke about her desire to build a duplex in her property. Four surrounding property owners also spoke in opposition to the request, expressing density, traffic, property maintenance, and the lowering of, the lowering of property values concerns. Uh, based on the opposition from the uh, surrounding property owners, the board unanimously recommended disapproval of the proposed amendment to the plan development district with the five to zero vote. And the applicant is uh, here and she has a presentation. Okay, um, we have some, so we're gonna go to item A, which is the public hearing I'll open a public hearing and we'll call on those uh, folks who had signed up okay. and they can come up and speak first. Okay. Juan Gonzalez, 209 Palm Valley Circle. Come, you want to give him the microphone? 
Thank you, Javier. Your name and address. Just say your name and address. Thank you for letting me speak here at uh, this meeting. My name is Juan Gonzalez. Me and my wife, Consuelo, are owners of a single family home which, which, we con which was constantly built in 2004. Our home is located on lot three and lot four on block three. We like this area because the Palm Valley subdivision has a planning and it separated the residential renters from the residential single family homes. By mixing, the, by mixing the residential single family homes and the, uh, and the residential renters duplexes will cause devaluation of our homes. I have been living here for 16 years. I have seen renters come and go. Also because you would create congestion of parking and it would not, and it would not be suitable for a fire truck or to allocate itself in a case of a fire and emergency. Please do not pass this proposal because of the safety issues and also for the devaluation of our homes, which are located on block three and also around the area. Uh, Jason, Jason Long and his father had uh, developed this, uh, this subdivision and uh, he had talked, he had agreed, he also agreed that the parking congestion and hazards would, uh, would create a, uh, a serious uh, emergency uh, case here. He stated this on the first meeting on September 9th through Zoom teleconference call. Please do not pass this proposal. I have a petition, excuse me, that uh, on block three, which is myself, Juan Gonzalez, block three and block four. These are all single family homes. Selena. Your two minutes are up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Next. The next <coughs> one there is, um, let me see, I have the name right here. Linda Odlen. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Linda Oladuni. I want to uh, address the property on Loop 499. It's a gas station convenience store. And I also want to talk about my home. Uh, 1218, uh, 12, not Loop 499. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, 21895 Amistad Road. Um, the property is on 1218, not Loop 499. This property has been there for um, almost 20 years. As my, actually, 20 years, 2000. Um, my husband and I opened this business, and then um, we've been making, uh, the, I mean, we've been paying our taxes and everything because we, we did not want to be behind in any way. Uh, but this time around, with everything that is going on, there's no how I can come up with this amount imposed on this property. My husband passed away. I'm in charge, and I don't know how to come up with this. Um, 2020 hasn't been good at all. Um, I've tried all my best to keep the business going. As a matter of fact, as we speak, they they, they um, painting the outside and the inside and just to make challenging beautiful because I believe in this uh, neighborhood. I've been here for over 30 years and I don't intend to leave. So I wanna do my best to keep the store open I just want the city to work with me on these issues. My home, well, I do, I'm not qualified for FEMA. <laughs> there was a hurricane and I had to come up with, uh, you know, taking care of the damages and everything. So I have nobody to help me but God. And I'm asking you today, please bear with me, uh, reduce it, the tax. Um, I don't know what else to say, but uh, I'm willing to do, you know, everything that, uh, you know, I can do, but with the taxes imposed on these two properties, there's no how I can come up with it. I don't want to file bankruptcy. I'm trying my best to do. Your two minutes are up. Well, thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Mayor. The next one is Susan Strong, 412 Palm Valley Circle. Mayor, could I get a copy of the of the petition that he gave y'all? May I have it, it? it? Is it a petition? It's a, 
This is this one is a petition. Right here. Yes. May I see it? Sure. Take it? Excuse me, ma'am. Sorry. That's all right. I'll take it. Mr. Gonzalez got, had a petition. I got, I got, I got. I'll, I'll I'll go there. I just realized. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, Ms. Strong, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank Good you. evening, and thank you for allowing us to speak this evening. My name is Susan Strong. I live at 412 Palm Valley Circle. I purchased the land in 1988, or 1998, prior to it being annexed into the city. The land that is being proposed to have the duplex was supposed to be a playground when I purchased the land. Um, at the time, I had moved back to Pittsburgh, and I came back down here in 2004 and built my house. I came from a city. I know that I'm going to have neighbors. I don't have a problem with that. I just don't want cha ever-changing neighbors. I don't want um, this congestion. When you live, when you're someone's neighbor and you know you're going to be there and it's your house, you have a little bit more um, respect for the people that are your neighbors. I'm not saying that I have been a renter. I'm not saying that all renters are bad. I just don't want renters next door to my house. I have the 12 and 13, which are right next to the land that she's proposing to uh, build on. And I do think it'll devalue my house. I thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Mayor, we have um, Christina Garfield, Palm Valley Zone. Good afternoon. Um, I have prepared some slides that I would like to pass out to my to my neighbors on Palm Valley and to to you guys as well. Okay. If you can hand them to the officer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Dr. Christina Gonzalez. I'm here to discuss my request to rezone Law 11, Block 3. I have heard the concerns of my neighbors, and my purpose for tonight is to explain my long-term goals and to, goals and to allay any concerns they may have. I lived in the neighborhood for two years and I plan to stay in the neighborhood permanently. The proposed Thank building you, will be a homestead for myself and my daughter on one side and for my aging parents on the other side. My goals are to maintain and increase the value of the neighborhood. I have interest in the area because I also own another uh, two properties on the same street on Palm Valley Circle and I have plans to build two additional homes. Lot 11, block three on the next slide just shows the aerial view of the lot. Um, and slide four shows the previous homes I've built on Palm Valley Circle. They have increased the property values of the neighborhood. 430 Palm Valley Circle appraised at 125 a square foot. It sold August 2020 last month for $205,000. The sizes of the homes that I have built in the neighborhood have been 16 and 1700 square feet when the neighborhood has a restriction of 1,000. So I've exceeded that. The next slide shows the proposed property. Each home will have its own garage and a driveway. One side will be 1,366 square feet and the other side will be 1,022 uh, 1, square feet. The next slide shows the proposed front elevation of the property. Um, slide eight is showing the multifamily <coughs> zoning that's uh, proposed for across the street. The concerns have been parking, privacy, renters, and property values. In answer to those concerns, there will be no your, renters. Your two minutes are up. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Dr. I have Gonzalez. one more, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I have Mr. Um, Jason Long that wanted to be called. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and do that. Let's call him. Let's see. She's the, owners or the, she, she's the, uh, the, the developer, the one who wants to build the home. Wants to build the uh, yeah. Mr. Long, this is Amanda, Mr. Long, Dr. and Gonzalez. we're on item number, nine, um, I believe, number eight. Palm yeah, Valley. Along with you. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to put you on two minutes, and I'll let you know when your time is up. Thank you. All right. My grandfather, Paul Johnson, was the one who originally developed the subdivision back in the early 90s. And uh, when Harlingen annexed it, I'm the one who created the current zoning that you guys were looking at pictures of. Um, that was back in 2001. Uh, the original zoning restricted the subdivision to one household per lot, with the exception of Block 2, Lot 19, based on its 
sheer size. I maintained all that zoning uh, while reducing the number of multiplexes and capping lot 19 to six residences, whereas under the former zoning, it was just showing condominiums with no limits. Uh, currently within Palm Valley Circle, there's 24 residences within the circle. Uh, current zoning permits 16 more around the circle and no more. Uh, as it stands, on-street parking is already a huge issue around the circle, particularly where the houses are developed. Every additional residence creates more congestion to the point that larger vehicles, such as emergency response and delivery vehicles, will not be able to move around the circle, particularly in the evening when people are back home. Uh, as majority owner in this subdivision, I oppose any rezoning attempt, which increases the number of planned residences beyond what is currently planned. I own 18 improved properties in the subdivision and seven additional vacant lots of which nine are within the circle on the east end of the subdivision where the rezoning is being requested. I pay significant levels of taxes to the city and stand by the zoning as it was established by my grandfather and it further restricted by my family. I sold a good many lots, the lots in here to the current owners and have always made it clear that I would never support increasing the residences beyond the current level to all the owners. I'd ask that the city commission stands behind the current zoning as is and does not allow this rezoning request. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, thank you. <coughs> All right, does anyone, anyone else uh, want to speak for or against uh, this rezoning? All right, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and go to item B, which is the consideration of possible action to amend the plan development site plan from residential single family to residential duplex for light uh, for lot three block three palm valley south subdivision located at 314 palm valley circle so this needs probably a motion to amend or a motion to deny the amendment well, my motion was going to be to ratify what the planning and zoning already did which is to deny may i ask a question please uh, because it was stated earlier that that uh, one is there a homeowners association uh, involved in this development i'm not sure if there is one i, I know they have deed restrictions okay. but we cannot enforce deed restrictions. i wish i could ask them yeah. it was stated earlier that that should have been a playground correct and as a developer if he's developed all that land why can't we even put the playground i think just that act of selling it to somebody else to put a house or to put whatever they could put on there kind of goes against his own process or plan except this is a pd it's not an r it's a plan development so when they when they wrote the plan out they said this is what oh yeah it should look water like. water's edge is a great example 11 different phases and i think there was i think they got to three or four and then it got sold and somebody else took over and they, they they you know you have you know they very expensive homes and, and and then they get less expensive homes um i i like the this is not a, um, a, a very cheap built duplex. It's actually a very nice duplex. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the thing I have a problem with is when they say they're gonna, it's going to devalue my property when property values have just continued to go up, right? Uh, um, so so I, I'm looking at uh, the, the, the type of construction that's being proposed. And across the street, you have... You know. Well, right now there's nothing across the street, but here's my r rationale behind it. <coughs> it's nine homes, and I think we use 1.5 cars per home. That's kind of supposed to be the, but today, I mean, like where I live, I live in a, in a, in a, in a, a neighborhood that's probably pretty similar to with, because I've walked this, this, this is in my district, and I've, I've walked this and knocked on doors three times now. And, and so the streets are narrow, and so now we're going to take... A, a house that would normally have one or two cars, and now we're going to take the same lot and we're going to increase that to three or four cars. But and that's my concern. They, my concern but is they have garages. I, I know that. I, I know they have garages. I know they have garages. <clears throat> and, and and I was surprised. I was I had seen the lot backwards, yeah. and I'm going where are they going to park? Because right. normally when you have a, a triangular shape, it's the small part of the triangle <laughs> to the front instead of mm -hmm. to the back. Um, and, and yes, I. I, I I stand corrected on that, but I, I, I'm, I, my main concern is going to be is the fact that this is a planned development. Um, uh, well, it was. That that section should be all single-family homes. I mean, mm -hmm. yep. 
things can change. I mean, just like you said, people people change hands. He and, sold it, and that's what happened. It's been sold, and now right. it's in somebody else's hands. But this is where, uh, you know, we have to exercise a little bit of wisdom, and we have to listen to the people that live there. And that's the, the part that's compelling for me is listening to what happened at the P and Z. Is that, you know, they they said because. The immediate residents. This isn't residents that are down the road. These are people that live within that. They can touch that property, and they're asking us to to be lenient to them. Yeah. And where where are you said 1.5 1.5 cars. cars? That's usually what people use when they calculate okay. how many cars. Right. It takes. And so, like Commissioner Ribes said, they have their own parking garages and driveways right. that they but use. But they still so have a second car. Well, even if you have yeah. three cars, you can still fit them in the driveway and the, and the parking garage. Um, my, my question is, where, where is the data saying that um, expressing density, where, I mean, I can, ex I can see how you express density, but w where is that? Where is it showing that there's so much traffic that it's going to be a problem? And how can they assume property maintenance is going to go down when it hasn't even been built yet? Just, and then the lowering yeah. of the property values hasn't been established yet we we just approved a few meters back you remember that other development where we actually shrunk the streets a little bit well th and that's where i'm talking yeah. about these are shrunk streets these aren't your typical right, no, but but these we are to, garden, we the, these are pd streets, streets. right we so they're street. narrow right right so, right. so i think uh, again my thing my issue with it is the minute that the, the developer who had control of that and again, once they make their money, this is what I was in. They're going to take off and then, you know, Understood. whatever's left over is left over. Understood. So if there was supposed to be a playground, they should have put a playground. That's the, on the developer, in my opinion. But, but do we So, so do once we, they sold it, and, and, and the, the person that bought it has every right to, you know, put, and again, it's not a, a bad development. That's that's what I'm looking at. I, I agree with you. I, no. I, have, I, have, I, have, I, I am very torn because I do agree with what you're saying. The, the problem is here is that do we punish somebody for something that didn't happen? How are we punishing them? No, not punishing Because them. it was supposed to be a, a playground. You're, you're original, punishing original the original design, it was going to be a green space. Right. You're, right. you're punishing you're the puni investor that's going to put a pretty penny into a, to a duplex that's going to cost X amount of dollars. I know. And I would imagine that's not uh, Section 8 housing or anything like that. So that in itself lends the type of renter they would have. Correct. But, uh, you know, I've, I've expressed my motion. Yes, sir. If, if nobody wants to, to second it, I mean. Well, I, I think go ahead and make go ahead and make your motion. My, my motion is denied because you were interrupted. Correct. So go ahead and make your motion. My motion was to <laughs> deny this and ratify what the PNZ already established. Is it okay, Mr. Leal, this is Nesmore. I can't hear you all that well with okay. the math. Is I'm your sorry. Is your Can you hear me now? Deny the uh, zoning change. I didn't hear the question. The zoning change. Yes, I'm asking to deny the phone, the zoning change. And you made a motion. I made. I'm making the motion. I'm waiting for a second. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All right, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. No. I oppose. Okay. Uh, I motion to deny uh, carries. And Sorry for this. All right. I mean, there's good arguments on both sides here. It's a real judgment call. <laughs> Item nine: public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading for a special use permit to allow an adult business, vape shop, and a general retail GR district located at 1338 North <clears throat> Ed Carey Drive, bearing a legal description of Lot Five. Arlington Town Center subdivision. <clears throat> yes, uh, this is a proposed uh, vape shop, but it's an adult business that requires a uh, SUP on Ed Carrier Drive and close to Business 77. <clears throat> the zoning is a general retail all around. This is the proposed uh, site plan for, this, for the vape shop. And this is the shopping center where it's uh, proposed, and this is the suite where the there's an interest in, in setting up that vape shop. Uh, surrounding land uses, you have Security Services Bank, U-Haul, uh, vacant land, Wendy's across the street.
Staff recommends approval of the request, subject to the following, obtain and maintain the proper state permits, maintain the required parking in accordance with city regulations, comply with the Code of Ordinances, Chapter 34, Article 6, Section 34, 142, Unlawful Substances, comply with Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Article 3, Sections 2254 to 2266, Smoking Regulations, provide video surveillance, at least 30-day retention, and comply with all requirements from the different uh, city departments. Sir, can you remind me, please, uh, uh, why we tabled this? <laughs> I was just going to ask the same yeah. question. The, if you remember, the ordinance was not in the packet. Ah. It, uh, <laughs> so we have. We, did, we couldn't read the ordinance, and we were doing a Zoom meeting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. So that's right. motion to take it back off the table. Uh, second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. And uh, Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing. No one spoke in opposition, and they recommend, they recommend approval um, subject to the list of conditions uh, unanimously. Okay. Uh, the public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Uh, is there anyone who would like to speak for or against this special use permit? Mr. Lozano signed up to speak yes. on this item. Mr. Lozano, do you want to speak on this item? You signed up to speak on it. I did, but if there's somebody else that wants to go first, I don't want to be dominating this. Is there anyone who would like to speak for or against this special use permit? If you, I don't see anybody else uh, coming forward, and no one else signed up. So if you want to, if you want to speak, you need to take I'm advantage here, of I'm it up now. Here. I'm up, thank you very much. As uh, again. <coughs> um, I've mentioned this topic in the past, and I trust your recall. However, last month, as it started out, they were trying to remember that the ordinance was not available. So last month, Stanford <coughs> University, which most learned people feel it's the best university in the world right now, they did a very extensive study. And they found a correlation of five and seven times for young people that are utilizing vape because they're also prone to then use cigarettes and other uh, controlled substance. That's an extremely high correlation. And again, it impacts what I've said in the past that the youth are the ones that are going to be, that they're trying to solicit. The, plethora of flavors and and so forth and in that list that was itemized there really wasn't something that tries to protect the young people and and that remains a concern to me and I don't know that uh, I just don't think the city addresses uh, their concern for young people given the voluminous data that is the medical data that is now accumulating thank you all right thank you is there anyone else who'd like to speak for or against the special use permit? Hearing that, I'll close the public hearing and go to item uh, B, consideration of possible action to consider an ordinance on first reading for a special use permit to allow <coughs> an adult business vape shop and a general retail GR district located at 1338 North at Carey Drive bearing a legal description of Lot 5, Harlington Town Center Subdivision. Uh, read, I'm sorry, would the city attorney read the caption, please? In ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Harlingen to issue a special use permit, an SUP, to allow an adult business vape shop in a general retail GR district located at 1338 North Head Carey Drive, bearing a legal description of Lot 5, Harlingen Town Center subdivision, subject to complying with the following. One, obtain and maintain the proper state permits. Two, maintain the required parking Bases in accordance with city regulations. Three, comply with the Code of Ordinances, Chapter 34, Article 6, Section 34, 142, Unlawful Substances. Four, comply with Code of Ordinances, Chapter 22, Article 3, <clears throat> Sections 2254 to 2266, Smoking Regulations. Five, provide video surveillance with at least a 30 day retention of the video. And six, comply with the requirements administered by the planning and development, building inspections, environmental health, 
fire prevention, and police departments, providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? So moved, Ms. Moore. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Uh, I do share, uh, I actually do share Ronald's concerns about mm -hmm. people in vaping, and I wish, uh, but I think the state needs to regulate it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Item 10, consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading to abandon and vacate a utility easement being an 841 square foot tract of land, more or less, being 10 feet wide on the south side of Lot 3, Block 10, Park Meadows Subdivision, Section 6, located at 122 Park Lane East, African Desarrollo Community Development Corporation. Yes, Come Mayor. Uh, there is a utility easement in this lot. It's on, along the south side of this lot, Lot 3. and. Uh, it was established when the subdivision got recorded in 2012, but there are no utilities in, within the easement, and uh, <coughs> the right to build a house and removing this uh, easement will allow a bigger house. We checked with all the utility companies, and no <coughs> one has any objections to re removing this uh, utility easement that is not being used. <coughs> and it will, you know, like I said, it will allow a bigger house in the property. And that's all that separates the two properties, is that easement? Well, no, this is... Because that's is two the, blocks, the, lot, yes. three and block, lot three and lot four. But the easement is on lot... Uh, let me go to the survey. There you the go. applicant, the application is for this lot, and the easement is in the, in the south side of the lot Got three. Uh, so it's, it's only impacting lot three. They're ready to build a house. Uh, removing this easement will allow a bigger house. No, it's a big deal. So because there's an easement, the setback changes. Yes, you're not allowed to build on top of an easement. So they already own the property. They, yes. have, they have a restriction yes. there that says you can't build on yes. it. I, I was going to point out that it is an easement, not a right of way. There you go. That's where I got confused. Yes. Thank you. Okay, could we uh, ask the city attorney to read the caption, please? An ordinance abandoning and vacating an 841 square feet tract of land, more or less, being a 10 feet wide utility easement on the south side of lot 3, block 10, Park Meadows subdivision section 6, located at 122 Park Lane East. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? So move, Mayor. Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. Thank you. Item t uh, 11. 11 public hearing to consider a resolution authorizing a public improvement district for five years pursuant to petition being submitted by downtown property owners in accordance with chapter 372 of the Texas local government code the applicant is the downtown property owners city of Harlesham. good evening mayor and commissioners i am going to do an update on the downtown harlingen since the 2015 since the last renewal uh, petition so the renewal district percentages that we got this year were 57.83 percent of the property owners signed the petition which represents the 57.83 percent of the total appraised value of the area signatures were collected to represent 63.49 percent of all property owners which represent 59.85 percent of the square footage area I'm sorry, can you say that again, the, val the value? Yes, so 57.83% of the property owners signed the petition, which is the total appraised value of the area. And we only need 50.1%. Okay. Do you have an, an, uh, a number of people that signed? Yes, I do. And, and do you have the, the total number of owners? I think there was a copy of the petition in your Yeah, I'm looking at it, but what, yes. I'm, what, I, what I'm asking is how, how many owners are for it and how many owners are against it? Not, not, not by value or square footage, 
Uh, because you have owners that m own multiple properties, correct? Yeah, this was actually not a ballot. Uh, you signed it only if you were for it. If you were against it, you didn't sign it. Right. So, so how many people were for it that are owners? And how many people uh, uh, do we have total that, if whether they didn't sign or not, how many, how many are, are in that downtown district? If it's 100 and you had 57 uh, do that, am I understanding correct? Do you have that information? I don't have that information with me. I'm sorry. Okay. Because right. anytime, I mean, mm -hmm. the way it's presented, it's, it, it, to my only say it's skewed because, um, it, you know, whether they own 10,000 square feet or 5,000 square feet, I would assume that that property owner should have equal rights, right, or equal vote on what happens. So if you have one individual or a few individuals that have the majority of everything, then just by definition of square footage and value, they're always going to trump the smaller owners in that downtown district. And in my opinion, what makes the downtown district great are the little shops. You know, whether it's a coffee shop or a dress shop or antique shop, it's those little quirky stories that I think add value. Uh, not that not they don't all add value, but but they should have an equal voice, and that's that's why I'm 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 wondering the disparity of total ownership. So you're talking about the merchants, correct? Correct. Okay. It, it was roughly about 37% that didn't sign it. Uh, I don't know what that number is. But, but according no, to the state statute... Uh, there you go. Thank you. You, mm -hmm. you have to get uh, majority ownership to sign it, whether it's value or it's square footage. So that's why they had to get... Uh, and, that, and actually, it helps the district if you get larger property owners to sign it because they carry... Oh, more weight. I, no, I, I understand all that. But, but what the issues I've heard the last couple years is, you know, whether they're, they're, they don't like, they, they want to move away or get out of the downtown district. Uh, we used to have a, a, a lady that used to do a really good job of, of doing. She not she hasn't been there, right? Uh, I forget her name, Miss DeBerg DeBerg or something, something Cheryl. Cheryl. Sure. Sure. Cheryl. Sure. Sure. She was sure. fantastic. Well, I think this young lady's doing a very nice job. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but, but, are, 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 but are you? Uh, uh, well, I, I, you know, let's be careful. <laughs> well, okay, uh, so Cheryl, Cheryl did a great job when she was the downtown improvement dire director. We've had a long, we've had a good long line of, of good people in that. We're giving this young lady a chance uh, to do good things down there, and we want to support her. Right. So we had a change in the boundaries recently. Right. And so when that happened, I kind of got honed up on how this all works, because not just the boundaries, but we also had to change the board, the makeup of the board. Mm -hmm. And so during that, I kind of got, and, and uh, Gabe alluded to it, but the statute uh, it is based on the square foot, and there's two or three different ways to calculate it, but basically uh, the ownership is the one that's decision making. And, and so, uh, you know, just in my experience dealing with the people downtown, uh, most of those little shops that you're talking about are renters. Right. And, and most of their landlords have a big heart because if you tried to rent the same size of property outside of the downtown district, uh, you couldn't afford to have a shop. Right. And so, uh, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, I, I, I'm the same way. Why can't a lot of people get involved? Right. But the way it works is the statute right. it says That's if, it if one like. person owns half of the property, that person kind of carries the weight. <laughs> Yeah, they carry the weight. Right. Okay. And, and so, but I, I do I do respect what you're saying absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> the petition indicates the assessment at a rate of 15 cents per $100 valuation, which is the maximum assessment is capped at 5,000 a year, which we only have one, which is the Bank of America building that caps at 5,000. Our mission statement for downtown Harlingen is to coordinate improvements, promotions, and economic redevelopment activities in downtown Harlingen in partnership with various public and private groups and individuals. Our vision statement, downtown Harlingen is a thriving and vibrant, are of economically viable and unique businesses with activities that attract local citizens and visitors. An attractive streetscape, renovated buildings of diverse architectural styles, and an appealing mix of <coughs> restaurants, unique shops, offices, housing entities, residents, and businesses to invest in the historic city center. Downtown Harlingen is a public improvement district 
which, which was established in 1989 to foster economic growth and redevelopment in Harlingen Central Business District. We are a part of the Main Street program. Downtown Harlingen has been a Main Street America accredited program for 14 consecutive years with the leading program among the national network of more than 1,200 neighborhoods and communities. We have had some newest additions to our murals, which is the Live to Inspire by Tam Lopez, History of Rock and Roll by Mario Godinez, which is still, we're still adding some of his murals, Southwest Airlines founder Herb Keller mural by Angel Hernandez, The Day In and Day Out by Alex Ercominos. We do have our popular downtown events, which is Jackson Street Market Days, Harlingen Art Night, we have our newest uh, event, which is the Rotary Shrimp Fest, Halloween on Jackson Street, Shop and Sip Holiday Stroll, Run with Heroes 5K with the Harlingen Police Department, the annual Jackson Street Car Show in April, and our annual Christmas Parade. Continuing with our downtown events, we also have Viva Streets Harlingen and the Downtown Movie Night. And our newest Baxter Laws restoration, our newly developed Baxter Laws, was renovated and converted into rental units in 2020. It is now a vibrant part of the downtown, offering residents an opportunity to shop and dine in our downtown area and enjoy the many festivities offered by the downtown district in the city of Harlingen. That's the end of my presentation. Any questions? I so missed all the events. This, this, <laughs> this 15 cents is how much versus prior, the contract prior? It's the same amount, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. same amount. Right. And just roughly to give you an idea, on a $200,000 valuation, that 15 cents would be about $300. And, and the downtown themselves went through a big thing with the appraisal district as well, right? Many of those properties yes. got yes. appraised, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. That, that, uh, that's interesting. Fortunately and unfortunately. Yeah, fortunately and unfortunately, <laughs> right. Yeah. If you're buying or if you're selling. <laughs> Can I make a motion to approve or do we have to read? Sure. A motion to approve. Second. Um, Thank this you. is a public hearing, Oh, sorry. Oh, you. sorry about that. It is? Yeah, stop that. Uh-huh. All right, so public um, yeah. And sorry, I have we'll a lady by the that, name that, of, well, okay, Mayor, I'll let you open the public, public hearing. So this is a public hearing. So is there anyone like to speak for or against uh, uh, the resolution con uh, authorizing the public improvement district? I have a lady by the name of Josie Lucio, and uh, she would like to speak on item number 11 and 12. So I'm going to go ahead and call her mayor for item number 11. I was, I was adding, I was trying to answer Commissioner Uribe's question. I'm writing it by <laughs> county. <laughs> all the, people, all the property out. owners that signed, that signed this thing. And I may not get your answer for you. <laughs> okay, we're trying though. I appreciate it. I thought they used one petition. They had a separate <laughs> petition for each owner. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mrs. Lucia. This is Amanda Lisondo with the city of Harlingen. And you wanted to speak on item number 11. Uh, you have two minutes and I'm gonna put the clock right now. And you may start. Thank you. My name is Josie Lucio and I'm calling in reference to the property at 106 South Commerce regarding the proposed reauthorization for a public uh, improvement district. Um, my concern is the letter and the petition circulated are in English. Have they been uh, passed around in Spanish as well? I looked at the um, agenda for this, this city meeting today and uh, the West property owners signatures are on English versions of the petition. I believe they need to understand exactly that this is a, an additional tax that will be added to their property. Now, was the English version fully explained to them? Now, another thing, DID was originally started for the retail businesses in downtown Jackson Street area but now it has been expanded way beyond that area. A bus company, an automotive repair shop, tire shop, liquor, towing services are not retail businesses. They provide different services. In the years past, 106 South Commerce was exempt from this assessment originally 
for that reason? Is there a provision for exemption of such non-retail businesses from this assessment in this pro uh, proposed assessment? I further understand that only 50% of signatures were required, but 57.83% were obtained. One individual in particular turned in 49 signatures. How do we know how many were for and how many were against? Because with the, the 49 signatures, that over totally overrules any chances that the Mrs. Other Lucio, your time is. Your time is up, Ms. Lucio. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor, uh, before we take the vote, uh, we'd like to hand out a revised resolution that uh, it inadvertently had seven members on the DID board. Uh, the correct version should have 12 members, which is what it currently is now. Uh, that's the only change from the resolution that you have in your packet to this one, just the number of members that comprise the board. It's going to reflect what currently is right now, which is 12 members. So, ma'am, I understood the lady, she said that okay. one person turned in 49 signatures. So he has 49 properties in the downtown district, but they're all different under name, uh, differently named, so that only counts as one per each name of, of the property owner signed. So one of them can be, you know, my name, and the other one can be the actual business, you know, the LLC of it, and then another one can be an actual, his son, or that could be under, that's three oh, So that was my point, a lot yes. of weight. But, the, but when you go, the, that, that's, that's when, when I got involved, I was looking at going, so how does all this really work? Right. And so when it boiled down, uh, each property, they take the square footage. Mm -hmm. Is that how we, yes. we uh, explain, Gabe, because I'm going to get it all messed up. Um, <laughs> it was very, very complex. Right, it is. Um, what you've got to do is you've got to have 50% of the value of the property owners represented, including the square footage. So that's why it was important to get some of the larger uh, businesses to have representatives on the board. Um, and that makes the number of board members that you have to have a lot less. Otherwise, you'd have to have maybe a 30-member <coughs> board, which is if you get the larger owners, you can have a ma more manageable board, which is what we have now, which is 12 members. And, and it, it, it works well with, with that number. So but we did have seven, is that correct? Initially, yes. All this? Yes, but then as the as a, as a district expanded, it actually made uh, the composition of, to meet the statute requirements uh, more difficult with only seven members, so we had to expand to 12. And so, 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 yeah. so I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. No, to, so my, my prior question, there, this is not an increase or... This is what they've been paying. Yes, sir. That's, that's, that's just a continuation so, of the district. You stated it's an additional tax. It's, it's always been charged, whatever it's been charged. Yes, sir. This is not new. This is well, what's. Well, yeah, and so, so, I, so I counted, just counted, mm -hmm. about 50 different property owners, okay. different individuals vote, signed the petition. Okay. And some of them have multiple properties. They have one, that's two, correct. three, six, and one of them has 50. Right. And... And, uh, and 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 so, you know, and sometimes he's his own worst enemy. But, <laughs> but he owns fifty. He owns, he owns fifty properties, and he's willing to tax himself an additional fifteen cents on each one of those. So he's kind of putting his money where his mouth is. Right. No, no, I get it. I mean, to that to it, that extent. Yeah, Again, it, it, it just carrying the yeah, weight. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. I understand. Okay. All right, but I think that's a good number. I mean, I think that's a pretty. <laughs> I think that's a good number of property owners that are want, are supporting it and wanting. So yes, sir. Okay. anyway, so we want to we, we need a motion to adopt the resolution, right? Yes. And I think uh, we'll just go ahead and motion. I'm I'm motioning to adopt the new resolution. A motion to approve. And you, and you seconded it already. No. I'll, I'll second. Okay, we have a motion. Trying to get to get along. Any other any other discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> like sign, motion carries. All right, thank you all. Item 12, consideration and possible action to approve a resolution adopting the downtown improvement district budget for fiscal year 2021. Robert. Mayor, City Commissioners, uh, the budget as presented on Exhibit A was approved by the Harlingen Downtown Improvement Board, District Board at their September 1, 2020 meeting. 
A total uh, revenues of $243,125 compared to total expenditures of $253,942. Uh, staff up recommends approval. Is there a motion to approve? So so Mayor, we have Ms. Lucio again. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so well, uh, we could still make the motion. Then, then the, oh, okay. A motion to approve. Second. A second. I'll second. Okay, and so let's call Ms. Lucio back. Okay. Ms. Lucia, this is Amanda again. Uh, we're on item number 12, and you have two minutes, and I'll start the clock now. You may go okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm still with this assessment that is supposed to be added on or continue or build to our, um, added on to our property taxes. I am totally against it, and I'm sure other people are. Like I said, there should be a provision for the non-retail businesses to be exempt. Okay, does okay. that conclude her, her statement? Okay, uh, for the next five years or forever, uh, as long as they're in operation, I would think some something should be done and included in this proposed uh, assessment before it is approved. Is thank that, you. Thank you, Mr. All right, Wilson. thank you. All right, so uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign. Motion carries. Item 13, consideration of possible action to approve an agreement for tax collection services and contract for administrative, ministerial, and clerical assistance services with Linebarger, Gargan, uh, Blair, and Sampson, and authorized city manager to sign the agreement. Thank you. Linebarger. Linebarger, Gogan, Blair, and Sampson currently provide our delinquent property tax collection services and administrative services under an agreement. Uh, Linebarger has proposed a three-year fee structure um, as follows. Uh, for the first two years, it'll be 350 dollars uh, per account as established by the certified role by Cameron County Appraisal District for 2020 and 2021. And for 2022, it is proposed at 355 dollars Sent $3.55 per account as established by the certified tax roll of Cameron County Appraisal District. Mayor, commissioners, we passed out an updated version of the contract. So uh, our legal has some revisions, uh, some cleanup language. Uh, the line barger has accepted the language that we proposed. So you have the updated copy uh, before you. The dollar amounts have not changed. As a matter of fact, the three fifty dollars is what they're currently charging. And they held that rate for two more years uh, with increasing it only in the third year. And staff is recommending approval. Motion. <clears throat> I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. 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 motion carries. Aye. <clears throat> Item 14, consideration possible action to renew the consulting agreement with Terrell Smith and William Yarnell for state legislative and administrative affairs relating to matters of importance to the city of Harlingen. <laughs> and its affiliated organizations, boards, commissions, committees, and authorize the mayor to sign the contract. Mayor, commissioners, uh, what you have before you is a renewal uh, with, for a consulting agreement with Terrell Smith and William Yarnell. This is for state legislative and administrative affairs. Uh, we have been working with them for several years now. Uh, they, they do quite a bit of work for the city, and we do benefit quite a bit from having them under contract. The staff is recommending this agreement. It is a two-year agreement at the same rate of $10,000 per month. Again, staff is recommending approval. Did you say the contract was for two state years. legislative? Just state? lobbyist services, legislative. No federal? No, state only. So when, you, when we do the state level, that's just every, just when the legislation is in session? Well, when we do the, the state level, no, we actually utilize them throughout the year. Uh, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. When we're going through COVID and CARES funds, we contact them quite a bit uh, to talk to our, our state uh, lawmakers on the funding that was going to be distributed to different cities because the funding came in from the federal government to the states and distributed by the state. We wanted to make sure that we got our share, and so they helped us with that as well. So they help us quite a bit throughout the year. Another one was the e-commerce 
sales tax for online sales. They helped us with that as well. So we use them quite a bit throughout the year. And so we do have a new session coming up next year and we will utilize them quite a bit. Uh, do, uh, do they give, uh, will they ever come to the commission to present or say hello or? They, they do come down uh, when we're setting up our legislative agenda, which will start coming down soon. I'm just wondering, yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever met them. Uh, oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe I haven't. Well, they do, you know, they, they've been down. They've been down before. Been yeah, they, down yeah they've been down quite a few and times. A, and okay. you should meet them if you haven't met them. And, 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 and now, now, we do limit their, how much time, time they come down because they do, there are reimbursables, <laughs> so it, it costs us money. And, and, and they work primarily with, with you, Mayor, and, 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 and you guys are happy with them. Yes, I am. Okay. Right. And, I and, won't speak for the mayor, but I am. <laughs> and, and the legislature, even though they're not in session, they're still open. Oh, and yes. so they're making those contacts with the different. And, you know, if, as, right. we, as we know, the, it's important to stay in front of them all the right. time, not just every two years, but on a regular basis. Right. Yeah. And they do and a they, good job and, of that. And, and they've helped us a lot with a, a, agency work and other, and other like, like you said, the controller's office on this e-commerce stuff. Uh, when, uh, when the we Baxter were, building, when we were, when we were going, we were going through the Baxter building deal, yes. it helped us quite a bit. And then, and during during this pandemic, I've gotten uh, lots <coughs> of lots. We've gotten lots of information from them that has been very very helpful, especially like rumors and you know what's really going to happen. Spelling, you know, right? all, there were so many rumors, you know, and they were able to go. Uh, they've got some pretty good uh, some resources. Um, so. and, and I already started a conversation with them for our next session and what we want to put on our agenda. We do have some things that uh, are a concern to, our, to the city right. that we want to bring up. Yeah. I make the motion for an approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 15, presentation of the Development Corporation of uh, Harlington Quarterly Report by Rodell Garza, HEDC Manager and Chief Executive Officer. Rodell, welcome. Good afternoon. Okay, let me see if I can handle this clicker thing. Okay, so the, the quarter that we're talking about is April through June of 2020. Um, so for that quarter, our revenues, and, and let me just start by saying the bylaws actually ask us to talk about certain specific things in the report, and so that's what I'm addressing in the report. Uh, our revenues for that third quarter of the fiscal year was $1.5 million, and I'm going to just summarize. Um, the expenses were a little over $900,000, and we were close to $650,000 over in, in, in revenues over expenses. Our fund balance is healthy right now. As you can see, we've got over $10 million in our total fund balance. <clears throat> I wanna show this graph, because I show this graph to my board quite often. Um, this is a graph over the last 20 years or so that shows um, our Harlingen sales tax receipts. Um, and so, as you can tell, the city has obviously grown quite a bit. That straight line is, a, is, is basically a projection and it's a 3% growth line. So there have been years when we've been underneath that 3% growth line and there's years where we actually have been on top of that growth line. Um, right now, we're just slightly under, um, as you all can tell through all the different budgeting that you've done in the last few months. Um, but that's important for us to know that uh, it's all cyclical and uh, even though we may have an off year here and there, uh, it, it continues over the last 20 years to be a very solid 3% annual growth rate. Uh, some of the highlights from our program of work, um, you have to remember that in this quarter, this was the first full quarter where we had um, experienced the pandemic. So in March of 2020, when the shelter in place and shutdown uh, orders came in, we mobilized quite, quite quickly. Uh, the city and the EDC worked together uh, in surveying the local businesses to show what kind of negative impact was happening to each of those property owners. Um, not just the small business owners, but the um, manufacturers and the larger essential businesses were also taken into account. And we did notice that there was a, a slowdown in manufacturing due to disruptions in the workforce, mainly in 
um, some of the plants in Mexico, and then also disruptions in the supply chain. Uh, some of the things that we did uh, in response to the COVID shutdowns and, and, and problems that people were having were we revamped our website to become an information resource uh, for businesses. Uh, we were putting up as much information on a daily basis as we could find, making sure that the businesses were able to reach out to the federal resources that were out there. And then we uh, started Zoom webinars, uh, brought in different speakers to talk about um, uh, interpretations on the county judge's orders, for example, and then uh, how to market, uh, you know, our, our businesses through the pandemic. And all the while, we got to a point to where we knew that we needed to do something. And what we did was um, in May, uh, actually May 1st of 2020, we launched a Help for Small Business program. And just as a reminder, this was a million dollar set aside fund We've distributed over $459,000 to benefit 50 small businesses thus far. Um, and those 50 small businesses uh, represent over 400 jobs that are being retained. Um, so that's very important for us. We have set a deadline for September 30th. So for those people who are out there watching, if they're procrastinating, they need to put their, their, their applications in because um, there is a deadline for the end of this month. Uh, this is just a, a, a graph that shows where the businesses uh, during this third quarter uh, were actually being benefited. Uh, so seven of the businesses were from District 2. Uh, six were from uh, Districts uh, 3 and 4, respectively, and one from District 5. You don't like my district, huh? No. <laughs> well, um, overall, um, and this is an updated, this is an updated one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not us. It's not us. It's the applications that come in. But that shows you. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> that does show you that there is one from your district. Um, but but it, this and it wasn't me. It, it, wasn't it wasn't you. Wasn't me. No. Um, what this does show is that the, 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 the recipients of the loan program are the small businesses in the center part of town. And, and that's really what this program was all about. It was to help these kind of people. And you guys might recognize some of these faces. Uh, you get their, your nails, the ladies get their nails done with them. They get their haircuts. They get the cars fixed. You get hamburgers and barbecue. Um, you get your computers fixed. You get uh, your, your receptions and weddings all taken care of. Um, you get to kick back at Chuck's Ice House or at, uh, at the Classics. Um, those are just a few of the recipients. Um, so that's one of the things that we did in the last quarter that was very um, rewarding, but also very uh, time consuming. Aside from that, I uh, have to remind everybody that we have been, um, since the beginning of the year, we gave $100,000 to, to the TSTC Foundation to benefit um, directly students who we're about to graduate or very close to graduating. We call this the goal line assistance program because we just needed to push those kids across the goal line. Of that $100,000, almost uh, $92,000 has been invested thus far in over 109 students. Uh, the rest of it is gonna be uh, re awarded out this semester. And also, um, all these students have either graduated or received a, a certificate or some kind of associate degree in August, or they're gonna be graduating within the next six to nine months. Um, so these are people that are going back into our workforce and being very productive for the community. In addition to that, uh, we uh, contributed $73,000 in matching grant funds for a high demand occupation grant um, from T uh, Texas Workforce Com Commission to set up uh, the auto collision um, uh, repair program and it's not actually to set it up it's to enhance what was already there uh, so this seventy three thousand dollars along with seventy three thousand dollars from T texas workforce commission uh, helped tstc uh, bring in new equipment and the initial cohort that's going to benefit is uh, 20 students on top of that bogus ford and others uh, in the community have provided scholarship funds and internships for some of these students so that's part of what we're doing to help in the workforce development. On uh, the realm of large employer attraction, 
Um, there have been some employers that uh, have continued to grow. Obviously, many of our call centers have, but they have been working remotely. Um, Spectrum has been one of those that has continued to hire a lot of people, but um, they're all working from home. Polysachi pol polymers at the industrial park is still hiring people. Allo Labs is producing uh, the gels for the hand sanitizers and is still hiring people. Um, Texas uh, pol Plating and Polishing Services has continued to grow into a new facility. We've got a spec building program that uh, we'll talk about in just a minute that's gaining momentum. Uh, we've also got a business retention and expansion program that has really done a lot over the last three months to make sure that um, our, our businesses know that uh, the city is behind them and supporting them in, in their efforts to stay open. Uh, and then our manufacturers association didn't stop meeting. We just started meeting virtually. Uh, in our marketing department, we've uh, increased our social media presence. Uh, most of you are aware of that. Uh, through LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and other venues. We launched our Spanish language website, which is getting great traction. Uh, we're revamping our website, uh, which should be done before the end of the year. Um, we've increased marketing in Mexican publications. Um, just yesterday, we were, uh, over the last two days, we were meeting with corporate real estate executives uh, in a virtual conference, which, uh, like every other Zoom meeting, uh, if you've been to these conferences before, you see some familiar faces, and we were able to talk about what's going on in, in, in South Texas and specifically in Harlingen with these site selectors and uh, corporate real estate uh, uh, directors, which is really good uh, in terms of understanding what their needs are and how we can help them out. Uh, we've turned to technology to uh, help us identify prospects. We've got a program called Gazelle AI that is helping us uh, narrow down prospects in a 9 million company database. And then kind of like Salesforce, we have a software program called HubSpot that is helping us keep track of uh, the projects and uh, new potential projects. We're also working with Retail Coach. Um, it's a retail recruitment uh, company out of Austin that is helping us uh, market uh, retail properties throughout the community. That's basically my report. Uh, you've got a lot more detail in your packet. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to address that. Anybody have any questions for Odell? All no. right, thank you. Thank you for that presentation. No. Thank you for that presentation, Rodell. So go to item 16, which is the consideration of possible action to approve mm -hmm. the Development Corporation of Harlan budget amendments for fiscal year 2019 to 20. Someone. Okay, uh, for this one, uh, the budget amendments are in your packet. I'll talk about some of the highlights of it. Um, first of all, the board already approved the budget amendments on our September 1st meeting. Um, we had done a amendment back in April, um, taking into account that we were expecting a slower um, revenue stream because of COVID. And so we cut back on a lot of things. And um, actually, our sales tax receipts have been a lot stronger than what we, we had expected in April. And so we've actually done very well in terms of uh, reducing our, our, our fund balance withdrawals. Uh, we also uh, had not taken into account uh, the bond refunding that we did earlier in the year that saved us uh, half a million dollars per year for the next few years. Uh, and also we uh, cut back on several of the categories in an administration and personnel, uh, basically because a lot of it, uh, the marketing was uh, in our travel budget and we had to cut back on that. Plus I didn't feel a position that uh, I've had open for a while uh, because I didn't want to crowd our office and wanted to try to make sure we kept the, with, with the guidelines that CDC had put out. And we've also had some projects that have extended into next year um, like I said, the, the budget itself is in your, in your packet. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to address them. Okay, is there a motion to approve the uh, Development Corporation budget amendments? Second. A motion to second? Any second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 I suppose. Like aye. aye. Motion aye. carries. Item 17 is consideration of possible action to approve a resolution approving and authorize the Development Corporation of Harlingen's budget for fiscal year 2020 to 2021 and program of work for fiscal year 2020 to 2021. 
All right. Um, similar to what we did this year, we had set out um, certain goals for this upcoming year um, that we have um, put together, and they're part of our soon-to-be-adopted strategic plan for, actually, it's a three-year plan. Um, so I'll go through those goals briefly. Um, and we split it up into six goals. Uh, one of them is investing in human capital through our specific workforce development and training activities. Uh, the second one is uh, increasing our Harlingen industrial base. The third one is increasing our retail sales tax revenues and retail establishments. The fourth one is focusing on healthcare facilities and increasing their offerings. The fifth one is what we constantly done is advocating for transportation infrastructure improvements. And the sixth one is uh, developing a robust entrepreneurship and innovation hub. Uh, I've already talked about some of the things that we've done in the workforce training this year. We hope to do continue doing that next year um, through cooperation and collaboration with TSTC, Texas Workforce Commission, Cameron um, um, Workforce Solutions as well. Um, in increasing our industrial base, we've uh, already mapped out some master plans and are working with some developers um, for um, the area that we own behind what used to be FedEx and is now RNL Logistics, um, the 65 acres off of uh, Roosevelt Road and uh, the expressway. And it goes all the way up to Fumetto Road as well. So this is one of the layouts that we've looked at and we have some people interested in, in starting construction in those. Uh, we've also mapped out what the master plan for the industrial park is for the unimproved properties that are out there. And we have a developer that's very interested in doing some of that. Actually, one of the buildings is already up. Um, one of the smaller buildings on Industrial Way has been developed this year. Um, it's hard to tell you which one it is, but Industrial is the cul-de-sac that's going north and south, and one of the smaller buildings is about 9,000 square foot building. It's empty right now, but it's uh, being worked on. And of course, we're working with the Port of Harlingen and trying to recruit companies uh, into that, that area as well. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, activity that is going on in terms of the retail world. Um, Best Pro Shops actually had a really good June. Um, their, their sales have increased because um, of the products that they sell. They're popular. Um, so we're going to continue working with Best Pro Shop and the property owners adjacent to Best Pro Shops to, to uh, develop those properties. Best Pro Shop has actually even given us um, some of the land that we had set aside for parking that we didn't build on allowed us to, to take that out of the lease, and so now we can develop that property as well. So we're working, again, through Retail Coach with some developers that uh, are very interested in those properties. Obviously, healthcare is a, a big uh, economic driver in Harlingen. We're going to continue to play a role in that. Um, our relationships with UTRGV and the School of Medicine are going to continue to grow. I'm actually serving on a strategic planning committee right now with UTRGV School of Medicine. Um, the Neuroscience Institute is just the first building of many that are going to be coming into that area. And uh, the EDC is hoping to, to play a role in that as well. I serve on the um, Alliance for I-69 Texas board. Uh, we were actually on some what we call a virtual fly into Washington, D.C. today. I had heard of some discussions about uh, legislative consultants in, at the state level. But this is an organization that does a lot of lobbying for transportation improvements at the federal level. And some of the things that we do sometimes is actually get on, on calls. And this was the Zoom type of call with some of the state reps, or, or the, I'm sorry, some of the representatives and senators, Senator Cruz's office and, uh, and a couple of the congressmen, we were discussing the need to finish I-69 and some of the improvements uh, so that we can continue to promote efficient uh, truck traffic through our area and onwards. Uh, in addition to that, of course, uh, in our budget, you're going to see that we have some money set aside for um, helping the airport uh, keep working on their U.S. Customs presence at the airport and a few other things. 
One of the things that we learned this year is that small business is very important, obviously, uh, even though most of our focus has always been on trying to attract the big fish. We got to take care of the small fish in, the, in, in this pond as well. And this year, we've done a very good job with that. As a matter of fact, and I forgot to mention this earlier, um, Texas Economic Development Council has awarded us with a Community Economic Development Award for the Harlingen Helps Program. Um, so basically our category was in transferability. What we did here in Harlingen can easily transfer to any other community in the state. And it was because of the leadership here in this room and at my board level that made that possible. Um, so virtual high fives all around. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> award, I think congratulations. Thank you. Um, so that was exciting. Uh, obviously, we've uh, been on, uh, on the radio and in television, both English and Spanish, uh, promoting this program and promoting um, small business here in Harlingen. And we're going to be continuing to do some very innovative stuff for, for small businesses in the, in the next year. Um, so that's kind of our, our budget hi our program highlights. Our budget has also been in your packet. I'm going to just briefly talk about it. 67% um, of our revenues are actually derived from our sales tax. Um, most of our expenditures are equally distributed between our direct business incentives, um, our debt service, and administration. Uh, marketing right now is at about 3%. That's on purpose. Um, if you can't go anywhere, you've got to just spend it on, on, on uh, digital stuff. And we're doing a lot of that digital marketing. Um, I can go through the different line items if you all care, uh, but it's in your packet and I'm sure that you all have reviewed that. You all have had the pleasure of being in our board meetings from time to time and talked about all of these during our different workshops. So um, for this next year, our budget includes $6.8 million in expenditures and um, almost the same in revenues. There's a slight fund balance uh, withdrawal that we're expecting but that's basically it and again um, our fund balance at this time is very strong uh, i'm going on my eighth year here and uh we've never been in better shape okay motion any, for approval, sir. second all right okay. any discussion all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Those aye. Opposed, aye. like aye. sign motion carries <clears throat> rodell thank you very much and again congratulations on uh, being a recipient Thank you. HDC being a recipient of the transferability award. Thank you for that interview in Spanish. When I was flipping the channel, I saw you in channel 40. It was a good interview. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and the last item on our agenda is consideration of possible action to approve the proposed list of streets for 2020 2021 mm -hmm. street improvement program. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, this is the upcoming street improvement program that we've been working on. For next year, um, we've identified 10 streets um, throughout throughout the city, um, and uh, I'd, I'd like to just touch on touch on which ones they are. Um, uh, the first one is Commerce Street uh, between Business 77 and uh, Wilson Road. Um, the next one is Industrial Way between Business 77 and Frontage Road. Uh, Emerald Lake Drive from Treasure Hills Boulevard to uh, the cul-de-sac there at Mariposa. Um, Garrett Road from uh, <clears throat> from Palm Court to Stewart Place Road. Um, Paloma Lane from Business 83 to Garrett Road. Uh, Schaffner Lane from Tucker Road uh, to the end. Uh, New Hampshire from the railroad to Hale Drive. Uh, Monte Posa Drive from Hain to the end, uh, Fillmore Avenue from M Street to J Street, and K Street from Fillmore to Tyler Avenue. And I, I did have a uh, <coughs> kind of a caveat with the, uh, the Garrett, Garrett Road project. Um, that's one we've been working with our, our, our partners at the county level. Um, there's a 50-50 there's a uh, uh, split there between us. So. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the work to be done to that road uh, it would be contingent on us uh, completing an interlocal agreement with them 
uh, for that for that project. So, and, and I have had several conversations with Commissioner Ruiz, and he's very interested in partnering. And they do have funds set aside for uh, the 50-50 cost. So, I see that's not on the list. Or do we have something set aside, or we would? No. So that three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars for Garrett Road, that's our portion of that project. Okay. Oh, I don't see it on his list on his preliminary list. That's why I'm asking. It's it's on it's on the on the in your packet. My packet shows uh, item nine seven five. Six. Okay, that uh, the next page would be the the visual, and if you look at the there's one that's 5.5, and uh, I apologize, this ranking might be a little confusing. This yeah, this is the visual index. This isn't uh, an, a a ranking uh, as it as it as it would normally uh, be. That terminology is a little confusing. My so, apologies. So the the candidates are the ones that are on this map that you gave out. The correct map? okay correct N not that other one. uh they are on here too but it's a little more broken down and 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 uh okay on this one because there's no dollars on this one this other one had dollars correct okay well, okay it was in my packet <clears throat> that's why i saw the dollar amount. am i the only one that got that no there there's a a smaller handout which okay. which has kind yeah. of a breakdown of each section we didn't, we didn't get that no, okay. yes, we did get that, but it doesn't include uh, Garrett Road on it. There, if you'll look, there's one that's 5.5 .5 in the ranking. Oh, sorry. No, no problem. We, we just we just put it in there, sir. We're we're sorry. We forgot to put it in, but we just well, had you it updated right my now. my spreadsheet. <laughs> is what it was. I like, I like the motion for an approval. Second. <laughs> okay, Commissioner, we have made a motion uh, to uh, adopt the, uh, and approve this proposed list of streets. Or second? Second. Oh, he, I think. Okay. Second. Commissioner Puente. Puente. Any other discussion? Let's build streets. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, aye. like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 18 of board appointments. Any board appointments? I have none, sir. I have none. Any board appointments? No. Commissioner Besmar, any board appointments? <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> All right. I think you already said it. Right, that concludes our meeting. Ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Hey.